Hi guys, it's ShishkaBobber1 coming right back at you with another Boom Beach video. Today's video, guys, you know where we are. We're back on the SS Fun and Imagination. This time, though, we're on Mini Bobber's Warship, my, uh, my mini account. Um, we'll be getting into some hits later in this video. Um, this video's got a bunch of ground to cover, and uh, it's gonna have four parts, well, three parts and an intro. Um, basically, we're gonna be covering the ramp bug. I think some of you guys know what I'm talking about. I'll explain it. Um, I figured this out in season one, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, the second part of the video is user data and, and also some leaderboard data. We've got some charts that we're gonna go over. Yeah, and if you don't like that, just skip to the third part, and um, I'll be doing some live hits on Mini Bobber's account right now with a troop combo that's so crazy only Shishabobber could, could, you know, actually, like, maybe make it work. Um, but the first thing that I want to talk about, guys, more important than any of that junk, well, it is for me at least, <laughs> um, was something awesome that really happened today in the boombox. I'm sure most of you guys probably saw this, but um, we got to talk about it. There I am. Right over there. That's my video. Thank you so much, Rick. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, the views have just gone nuts on that. Of course, we're already over 10,000 now. I think it had, like, a little over a thousand, or maybe it was at two thousand. I don't remember. But anyway, like before this, before you put it in the boombox. But now it's over ten, and it's still it's still going up. It's probably already at eleven by now. Um, so that's really really cool. That's a big accomplishment for my channel. I really appreciate the exposure, and I hope I picked up some new subscribers uh, as a result. And uh, you guys can you know sail along with us as we uh, as we just continue to discover all the fun that warships brings. Um, so that's really cool, and that's awesome. So I just had to, had to say something about that. I'm, I'm super pumped. Um, and, and big shout out to Fritz. Uh, Fritz is Army, guys. If you don't know him, check him out. He's a really cool uh, YouTube streamer. I think he mainly does streams, some videos, I suppose. Uh, very creative guy. He made an intro to his, to his stream this morning. Unfortunately, I was I was asleep. But um, it was like kind of a, an ode to Shish Kebab or just uh, celebrating my accomplishment for the boombox. So I really appreciate it, sir. I went back and saw it later. It was really, really funny. Uh, I like how you did that. I like how you're reading the video titles and stuff and making a song out of it with your uh, boom, baby. Really cool. Um, sorry. So, okay, we covered that. Uh, ramp bug. Yeah, let's talk about the ramp bug, guys. Um, so to do that, I need to show you the image. What am I talking about? Um, here we go. So, uh, let's let this load in a little bit. Let me turn my drawing tool on. All right. And maybe I should move my face out of the way. Yeah, it might help from over here. Right. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. A lot of you have probably been noticing that um, when stuff is shooting your troops that are coming up the ramp, things don't quite make sense. Um, because your troop will just die when they shouldn't. And in this example, this picture is a perfect example. One of my uh, uh, task force members linked this in our, in our chat app. And he's like, what the heck? How did this boom cannon, who, whose range you see highlighted there, it's, it's the range that runs all the way around here, all that good junk. How did that boom cannon actually kill Brick? Brick was down here. Um, she's dead. You, you can see the stars on her head. Brick's at the bottom of the yellow line. You can see the boom cannon's range, and you can see actually where it shot. There's like a black area right in here. Um, so, but Brick was down there and she died. You can probably already see what's happening here, but I believe I figured out what's going on. I've already informed uh, Rick and Supercell about it. Um, I think the game is two-dimensional, guys. <laughs> uh, it only it only plays on one one flat surface, one plane. So the plane that we're playing on, or the surface, is the warship surface. And everything that we see on the ramp is just a projection onto an inclined plane, but the game itself operates on a single plane. And um, I think you can actually see this on our own beaches at home, but the, the, the angle of inclination is so much more shallow that it's not very noticeable at all. And I, I might just be seeing things. But, but let's, let's just focus on warships. Um, the point is this. It's consistent, okay? Uh, it is a bug. I hope they can fix it, but I have a feeling this one's going to be, like, awkward. Like, I think they feel, I think they need to just change the angle of the ramp, but that doesn't work with the aesthetics of the large warship. So... This is going to be a weird one for them, but it's something that needs to be fixed because, I mean, things aren't visually where they're supposed to be. I mean, Brick Brick was down here, where the arrow is, but she's safe. She's supposed to be safe. She's outside of this, this danger zone by a lot. Um, but, you know, that's not the way it is. In reality, so, so, so what I'm trying to tell you is everything maps to the, to the warship plane. Let me just rewind. Everything maps to the warship plane, guys. So if you extend the lines out, which I've done in red, as you already see, that's the extension of the warship plane. And then your troops, if you take a vertical line or something near a vertical line, it's not exactly vertical because they use two-point perspective and all this stuff. But if you take a vertical line, more or less, and draw it straight up, 
and uh, actually they probably use three point perspective. I digress. If you uh, you draw it straight up, and um, that will basically show you where you are in the warship plane. So you've got to just keep that in mind, like how things map. And the further, like the further down the ramp you are, like down here, obviously the, the vertical line you draw is much bigger than when you're like right here. It's a shorter vertical line. So it, it, it's weird, guys. It's a bug, but you can use it consistently. You can do some, two smoke drops and things like that as soon as you figure out how these points map to one another. Okay, um, let's just trash all that junk. Cause, like, for instance, I mean, it's too bad they don't project the. Uh, maybe, maybe that's the trick. They need to project the ranges of the boom cannon down onto the ramp properly. Because, as you can see, guys, this this boom cannon here is just a perfect shortened circle or an ellipse, right? So what I'm saying is it doesn't even take that, it's not even taking the incline into account. And if it was, you would have something, oh, I'm, not, I'm not a very good artist, guys, but you would have something that looks like that. It, it would be bent down, well, and probably extended out because it killed brick, right? So it would, it would probably look something like this. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I can't draw, but I think that's right because it, be, it would be angled down. So that's the ramp bug in a nutshell, probably more than a nutshell. Um, just be aware of it and um, just, just you'll, you'll figure it out. Now, now that I've kind of explained it, if you didn't already see this, you'll figure it out. Um, okay, so that's cool. That's that. Um, overall, though, like there, there really aren't a lot of like bad like issues in the game in terms of bugs. That's probably the biggest one I know of right now, other than that random tech, uh, tech chest bug. And I appreciate you guys letting me know when you're getting them. I still can't find a pattern in it, um, but keep keep letting me know if you're getting those random rank chests, I should say, those random rank chests that just kind of randomly appear. Uh, please let me know in a comment of any of my videos, or actually my, my most recent video, uh, to let me know when, when that's happening and the circumstances surrounding that event where you want to win streak, you know, just, just tell me a little bit about the event so I can try to find some pattern in all this. Um, but that's that's not what we're doing here. Now, let's get on to the, the part that you, all of you guys helped me with so much. Um, nope, wrong way. It's over here. Um, we've got the Tech vs. Stars viewer data. Ta-da! I really appreciate it, guys. I had probably close to 100 or so um, comments just with data alone. And um, so that took me a while to get through them all, plus just the other comments in there. And of course, I still try to answer everybody. Um, I really appreciate it. So uh, it took me a while to put all this together. This chart represents a lot of work. And a lot of work by you guys, too. So I appreciate it, like, collectively. Um, now, there were some data points, so oh, well, let's just rewind. Uh, so this shows us our, the tech versus stars for the, uh, for the data that was submitted by the viewers that I requested in the last video. The colors represent whether or not they have instant training or not. Um, you can see down here I've, whoops, whoop, wrong way, turn my tool on. Um, you can see down here I've, I've called it with IT and without IT. The reason I said that instead of just saying the word with is because I'm in ship with a plan. It's the name of my task force, so big shout out to those guys. Um, anyway, so yeah, the green dots have IT, the red dots don't have IT. For my viewers that responded, it is roughly a 50% ratio. As you can see, there is slightly more non-instant training accounts. Um, not all of the data that was submitted is represented here. I did stop taking data after about two days because this is a very time dependent thing and some data that was submitted was incomplete. It might not have had uh, one of the three data points I was looking for, which was instant training, uh, stars, and tech level. If it was missing one of those, I couldn't use it. But for the most part, you guys were super thorough. In fact, you gave me a lot of other data points too that I didn't ask for, which is great, but I was only extracting these three, but I still love the information. Maybe I can go back and use it, like number of engine rooms and things like that. That was pretty pretty useful. Um, but let, let's talk about let's talk about what we do have here in front of us. Um, at first glance, you guys are doing kind of the same, kind of. Um, oh, like I was saying though, there were a couple of green dots that were like way off the right side over here, overachievers. Actually, I live over here on, off the chart as well. Um, but I just I had to I had to keep you guys off of this view because it just distorted the data too much. So I wanted to keep the range concise. Um, also, these, these lines, like here, here, and here, those lines, they represent the different um, leagues, okay? This first one is gold, this one is the, uh, um, what you call it, diamond, and over here at the end is legendary. Not many of you guys are, are into legendary rank yet, at least not when you submitted the, um, the data. Now, uh, what we do see though, you guys do follow the same more or less, you know, overall pattern. I mean, there's a band that runs from here, kinda, 
like this. So you guys are sort of all fitting within those bands for the most part. Um, and some of that shift can just be due to like the, the tech growth that happens over the two days that the data was actually taken. So that's where some of our resolution gets distorted. But uh, that's it. So that's the, the norm as it was for about a period of two days ago. Um, and for, for you guys that are watching my videos, this tells me a lot of good information. It tells me where you guys are so I can gear my content more towards you. And of course, that's part of the reason we're doing a mini bobber hit tonight. Um, but more subtly, what we notice now are things like, let's take a look at the line right here on the Diamond League, okay? Uh, this one's really important to get to because as you guys know, every time you enter a league, your daily chest or your, your engine room chest, whatever you want to call it, um, I like the term daily chest though. Um, those 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 grow with your league, so it's very important that you like get into the highest league possible to get the maximum tech per day. It looks like guys without instant training have a very hard time doing this because almost all of you guys are on the uh, the left side of that line. So that's too bad because that's ho definitely holding you back in tech. Um, and there, there there's always exceptions, you know. Um, always exceptions. Like, we've got this this awesome individual right here. He's also a member of my task force. He's since moved across the, across the Legendary line. I think I've mentioned this before. It is possible <laughs> to actually be in Legendary League right now in an account without instant training. Oh, I got an email. Um, but uh, but you've got to be, like, insanely good at the game to do that. So I, I don't even think I'd be able to do that. That's, like, that's like the, you know, crazy skill. Um, kind of like natural gift stuff. Um, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Um, but it is possible, but it's not very probable. Um, now, the other, the other people I want to talk about, this is, is a, this little interesting bunch down here. Um, what these guys are doing, they're camping out. They're waiting. They're waiting for their chance to strike. Like, they have not teched their ship up. They, they, they like the, the league that they're in. They're just, they're just chilling there in gold league, and they're getting that amount of daily tech. Because quite, quite frankly, all you guys are pretty much in gold league. Some of you guys are even in stone, but I, th I think these stone players over here, I don't think you guys are playing that much. Um, otherwise, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know. It could be an engine room thing. Um, but again, I wasn't tracking that data specifically. Uh, but for the most part, most of you guys are falling into the gold league. And so are, so are these dudes down here, these, these campers. And they're waiting to strike. Probably near the end of the season, they'll have all this, all these upgrade tokens and uh, unlock keys saved up, and then that way they can just dominate the the nearby range of competition that, that unfortunately happens to be there at the time they decide to do this. And they're going to overpower their opponents so much that they can they can grind quite a bit without having to reload too many troops. So that they're building up for one really big hoorah at the end of the season. I think that's a pretty fun and interesting way to play the game. I'm not sure that'll actually get you the furthest in progression, but it's a heck of a lot of fun, especially if you have a, a multiple accounts, I would say. But maybe, maybe, maybe that is just the best strategy overall for a single account user. I don't know. Um, but it's definitely one that's it's really cool to see you guys doing that. Um... And what else can we talk about on this chart? Um, and in fact, let me know in the comments below what you guys see, because I can't, I can't see everything in this data, all right? Sometimes you guys point out some really interesting trends that I'm, I'm just not seeing. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so that's about it. You guys are about 50-50 on, on the, uh, you know, on who's got it and who doesn't. I did, oh yeah, I did see uh, three people, I think, in the comments tell me that they did switch from not having instant training to instant training, specifically for warships, and uh, that's really cool. I think, I hope that you're having a good time with it. I know the, the value is there because you can just ship for hours and hours, and <laughs> I know I've been doing it. I try to do it, uh, but these videos and everything keep me uh, gosh darn busy too. There's a lot of work that goes into these charts, but um, I digress. Yeah, so there it is, guys. And where do you fall on that? Are you kind of in the middle of the pack? Are you, uh, you know, are you higher than it? Are you lower than it? You're probably higher in terms of tech because the tech growth rate occurs every day, like roughly 90 tech per day. It, it really depends, but that, that's kind of an average growth rate. So obviously all this stuff grows up and also all the stuff moves to the right over time due to star inflation. Well, we've talked about all that before. Um, that comes from primarily from win streak uh, bonuses and also from the uh, daily first star uh, win bonus. 
Um, but we're gonna we're gonna try to tackle that two star day. Uh, I'm sorry that that win streak bonus. I'm, I've spoken with Rick recently last week and uh, kind of explained some of the problems that occur with that and some of the things that it even leads to in bad matchmaking. And uh, he said they were gonna take a look into it, and uh, hopefully they're able to. Uh, to deal with that hopefully hopefully they find they find some data on their end to support to support my conclusions you know um but we'll see we'll see but the message is out there they, they have heard um okay moving right along guys now oh, let's see am i done am i done with this i think i'm done um yeah we're done moving right along um now what now the part we're getting into is um I'm looking at global leaderboard data right now because there's some interesting trends going on with the matchmaking and that broad spectrum cue that we were talking about in the previous video. By the way, if you're new to my channel, a lot of concepts I just build on and I don't want to go back and re-explain everything. So if you're a bit lost, I highly recommend you just go back and uh, just start with the season two videos or heck, even go back to season one video. Start, figure out where it all began with the dark meta videos. Um, but yeah, let's get my head out of the way over here. So, um, yeah, the point is this, guys. We've got, we've got global leaderboard data plotted here that was extracted on the 27th of May on the green dots and the 29th of May on the orange dots. So we'll have the same dates for the next three charts that we'll be going through. Um, this one that I'm showing right here is stars versus rank, okay? And again, my sampling method is I take a lot more data points in the... Oops, oops, oops. Turn that pack on. I always take a lot more data points up... Uh, sorry about that. Minor, minor technical difficulties. I now have the ability to draw again. And we're drawing lines, of course. Um, so anyway, what I'm talking about here is stars versus rank from the global leaderboard. Um, my sampling methods is what I was getting into is, um, you know, I obviously have a more dense population near the, the top because you have a lot more changes that happen up there. And then as we go out, we try to like we start sampling less and less frequently. Okay, just keep that in mind because some things some things might kind of get lost in the cracks in some of these details. But it takes a lot of work and effort to get all this stuff, so it doesn't make sense. I just I don't I don't have the time to get every single point. Okay, so that, that's why it's done this way. Um, some of you guys have been asking before why, and that's why. Um, but I might have to start doing it because this. This data does not follow the typical natural distribution curves that we would expect, and that's because of the broad, uh, the broad spectrum Q. That's when you reach the top player rating, which is maybe the top 1,000 players, maybe the top 500. I'm not sure exactly where that is, but it's it's measured in a quantity and a number. I'm sure of that. Um, when you reach that, you get thrown in this broad spectrum Q that has to has a very large maximum matchmaking delta in order to reduce Q times. Okay. Uh, which that's one of the things I guess they, they tweaked after season one because queue times were taking a long time at the top So obviously the only way to do that is is to expand the, the spectrum, okay, but we've got some issues here because uh, The spectrum is so large that at the beginning of the game um, Because of the co-relationship between stars and tech every time you would like gain stars You would you would gain rank and you get a rank chest which gave you tech which made you even more dominant Which meant you could just climb all the way up and you could you could ride the elevator as I was calling it because um, You would just out tech your opponent so badly and then within the broad spectrum queue there's like nobody below you. I'm sorry, there's like hardly anybody above you, but everyone's just below you. So it just enables you to just feed off of the bottom and uh, consequently shoot your way up to the top. And that's why I said this was like an elevator phenomenon that was occurring in the game. And we talked about it in a, in a previous video, I think. Um, yeah, so this elevator is real and um, it's not really discernible too much right here, but the elevator does start, well, it's, it's in terms of rank. We'll, we'll, we'll see it on another chart. Um, what we do see here, though, in the global leaderboard rankings is a really interesting trend that's also occurring. Um, for those people that got to the top, the, the very top, this is this is Legendary 10 right up here, guys. Um, they've got two choices. I was assuming initially that they just stopped playing because that's more or less what happened in the first season. But that's not the case here. Here, we've got some that have, are still choosing to play. And... Um, What's happening is they're creating a whole new force in our in our lovely star universe, and they are creating a suction force. They are deleting stars, guys. Um, what's happening here is that when you are legendary ten and you win a match, your opponent loses a star, but you don't gain a star. 
<laughs> so the next time you lose a match, you go back down to legendary nine and twelve stars, right? But you're not you're not uh, a legendary ten. The point is, they are sucking stars out <laughs> of the pool. So we got we got all these people in the back, especially 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 these guys right here, especially these guys that are that are really pushing up like this. Uh, these guys are all generating stars from win streaks and just just you know normal star growth things like that. Um, and then these guys up the top, dude, they are sucking them all up. <laughs> and where we can see this, where this trend will get even worse over time, I think, where we can see this is this, sh this, this start, this sharp gap right here in star range where we don't have a very large population. That's bizarre. <laughs> it's because we've got tech giants at the top that are making it very hard for people to get those last couple of rank chests and they're maintaining their dominance by playing and they're also doing this in an effort to increase their win percentage um and that's also the reason why some people aren't doing it because they don't think they can get a better win percentage because they rode that elevator early in the season and that, that elevator moves the quickest early in the season as time moves forward the advantage that you get by quickly uh, going through the ranks and getting all the rank chests, it starts to diminish when compared to the um, the tech that you get just from daily chests. Because as more time goes by, there's more tech for everybody. So then that increase of tech that you get by climbing through the ranks isn't nearly as profound. So that's what slows this elevator down over time. Um, but so, so that's why some guys stop, because they just feel like that's the best they can do for the season and they finished early and they're just parking it there. Um, yeah, it's interesting, guys, and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep mapping this. We're gonna keep looking at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got our average stars per day of five point five seven in this range. That is very high. And what's funny is we've even got the star vacuum at the top. But I'm telling you, this is very high um, on the Canadian leaderboard, which obviously is just a very small, small section of the global leaderboard. Um, our average star rate was uh, just around three per day. So there's a lot of star generating activity happening in, in this spectrum of the game. Um, let's move right along. We got more charts to look at. Oop, nope, you would think I know this tool, but I don't. <laughs> Here we go. Um, here's where it starts to get interesting. It's always one of my favorite charts, is the tech versus stars. Um, this one tells us a lot of stuff, okay? First of all, you can see you can see that the the growth in tech rate more or less. I mean, you can see that the first week, uh, not for, I'm sorry, for the first day that we were taking data, we had a tech line that ran something like this, and then of course now about two days later. Or so, and by the way, I do factor this for for the uh, all this data is accurate to within an hour um, when I talk about averages and stuff. Uh, just as a side note, um, you can see another tech line that looks something like this. So you, you can kind of see where we've got tech growth occurring over this two-day period. And we've got our average tech per day of 88.75 across the global leaderboard, just a little bit short of 90. Now, this number is interesting because this number is actually lower than Canadian leaderboard data. Yes, it is. <laughs> why is it? Why is it? Well, I'll tell you why, guys, what we were talking about earlier. We've got people at park. They get the legendary 10 in park. Who are these parkers? Well, if you don't see them by now, I'll show you who they are. Um, it's anybody that doesn't have tech that follows the line. So let's get that tech line back up there, actually. So we've got our current tech line that runs basically like this, kind of. Um, <laughs> obviously, obviously, there's some dots above that. Um, but anybody that you see with orange dots down here, like these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys, uh, this this is just my legend over here. Pay no attention to that. But all these guys down here that I that I marked out, they're not playing, okay? Or maybe they're not playing much. Like I have a feeling that this green guy that was right here became this orange guy that was right up here. Um, the point is, guys, they're not playing, and that's why we've got a um, a retarded uh, star growth rate on the. Uh, I'm sorry, a retarded tech rate on this chart or or in on the global leaderboard, I should say. That's simply because some players don't play. And this does create a problem too, because I mean, in the grand sense of the scheme, that's just clearly something wrong with the system because 
you shouldn't just get there after like three or four days because they did get there in three days guys just like i predicted <laughs> by the way um yeah our first legendary tens got there in three days and a lot of them just chose to park in fact i thought they were all going to park but no no we've got some vacuum cleaners up top these guys up here <laughs> just sucking all the stars away <laughs> from everyone else that falls into their broad spectrum and the broad spectrum queue. And that area is roughly, I don't know yet, maybe 50 stars or so. And you can kind of see it as well um, in the data directly because uh, yeah, if it's 50 stars, like basically we don't see much data from here all the way to legendary 10. So what is that? That's 230. And Legendary 10 is 268. That's a big range, okay? So actually, actually guys, <laughs> we're looking more at 40, okay? It, it looks like it, it looks like it spans 40 stars. Um, or more. I, 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 don't, I don't really know. Um, it, in fact, it does go further. It, do, it definitely goes further because, yeah, anyway, it's more than 40, but this, this, is, this, this zone right here is like, the no man's land. It gets it gets rough. Um, it obviously has to go further than forty because um, the people like I've been queued up with them as legendary four. Okay, so I know it goes further. The thing is, I'm still able to bolster my push forward because I'm I'm sucking off uh, stars from the guys behind me because my my spectrum is further shifted down. So I know theirs actually goes further than forty. It's just that like that that no man's land where it, where it starts to just become like them and just the really tough guys right behind you. It, it's all right in here. And I know this doesn't apply to most people. It's really fascinating um, because it's just really messed up at the top. Um, and now I, I like to cover stuff like that. And plus, I'm, I'm looking at this myself because um, I, I live somewhere. You know, I didn't plot myself on this, but I'm, I'm in here. I'm somewhere in the spectrum. Um, I, I don't even know. I think I'm around. I, I would be a data point probably around uh, here. I think Shish Kebabra lives about right here, roughly. Um, but uh, yeah. So, actually, I'm, I'm up here. I'm over 1,800 tech. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but uh, the 1,800 tech part. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's bad, right? We need people to play, and um, it's just something that I hope they fix. But they, it's, it's, it all goes back to that win streak bonus thing, guys. It really, really, really does. And I hope, I hope it's the only thing they tweak in terms of the stuff we've talked about. I don't even want them to take away the first uh, win of the day star bonus. Leave it. I, it. That that win streak bonus is so bad that it's affecting how we view everything else. So let's remove that. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they can maybe do something for us by season three. I hope. Um, and uh, then then we'll take it from there, and we'll, we'll take a fresh look at how how the uh, the growth of the season is occurring. But it's got to go. <laughs> um, Moving right along, guys. We've got another chart. Hope you're not bored to tears yet. Battles versus rank. And um, this is also coming off the global leaderboard data. And this is an interesting chart as well. This one is a little hard to read in the sense that um, because of the way I distribute my data point collection, uh, how can I explain it? Like, basically, this guy... Yeah, this is a perfect example. Oops, if my pointer works. This guy right here on the 27th of May had 300 battles, but then when I go to check that same leaderboard position, which is lead position 400, when I check that on uh, today, it was it was a different guy, and he only had 100 battles. So it, be careful how you read this stuff, because it's, it's variable depending on which player I pick, but you can still kind of get a snapshot of the overall trend. I'm just, I'm missing data points in between, so you're not seeing where they all map to, is the point. Because the guy that was here, he very easily could be this guy today. He could be this guy up here. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't track it that closely. I, I can't. I mean, I could, but it'd be a lot more difficult. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, that being said, um, let's take a look at this. Digest it for a moment. Um, let's talk about the first thing: average battles per day, fifty-three point four seven, with the asterisks. Asterisk. Like I said, it's because of my selection methods that you can't. You can't really see that's the average amount per day because I'm just I'm just not capturing the full spectrum in this. And there's there's a high degree of variability, and the variability doesn't um, follow the same pattern that I used for my rank selection scheme. You, you really can't. I would need to use I would just need to collect all of it to be honest. But I I don't want to do that. 
Um, so just just keep that in mind, and otherwise I know I'll get comments because a lot of you guys are really savvy about this kind of stuff too. Um, but just keep that in mind. That's that's why it looks a little bit weird. Uh, right now, what we see though, what we see is some interesting trends. Okay, um, at least I do. And let me know again in the comments, guys. If you see other stuff in this data, please let me know. That's one of the reasons I like to get it out there because I like to I like to pick your brains too and hear what you're thinking. But in the in the 27th of May data. What we see more or less overall is sort of a, a general trend of, you know, nobody having more than just under 400 matches, okay? There's a couple exceptions. You have this guy up here who doesn't sleep or maybe he is into account sharing. I don't know. <laughs> he was way above. And then you got this overachiever over here, whoever the heck that was, I have no idea. They're probably just playing a lot. That that other data point, this guy up here, I we're that's that's questionable. He's he's off the charts, guys. Um, in fact, he's the reason I had to make the scale the way it is. Um, but uh, yeah, the point is you can see an average trend like that, and it's a lot of people fall below it. And the funny thing is, you can even see some of the legendary players. See the green dot over here, uh, underneath 200. Like these are the people who just get there and stop and don't play. In fact, you can still see that on the orange data. You can still see this really really weird pattern occurring. And now we're seeing something that looks like, like this. Oops, can I draw it? Here we go. Again, I don't know how true this is. I mean, we've got a lot of orange data now that tapers off. It's, gosh, it's so weird. Um, I don't even know what trend to draw for you guys, to be honest. Uh, something like this. I think. I think. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Well, it's all about that that vacuum and everything else that we're talking about. Um, and a lot of it has to do with uh, the elevator and waiting in line for the elevator. Uh, a lot of these people now, to progress, have had to grind it out a lot more. This group right here, and I'm, I'm part of this group. I don't know if my battles are quite that high, but I am part of this group in terms of rank. I think I fall... Oh, where the heck am I in rank? I don't remember, but I, th I think I'm somewhere between 100 and... Or between 75 and 125. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter point is these people have to work really really hard they've had to bust through that the um i guess the line to for the elevator and now we're also running into the vacuum and as we move through that spectrum uh it really requires you to grind a lot more matches and this gets back into everything i talked about with star inflation being bad then it's just exacerbated by this this broad band this uh, broad spectrum queue or this, this wide range queue um but it's interesting and you can see that the people at the top top they don't have to play very much. Now, you could argue, and, and it's fair to an extent, it is a very fair argument, that the people at the top are the most skilled. So, by default, they might not have to play as much because they have a higher win percentage, okay? And that is actually actually entirely true in many ways. Um, this season especially, like, how can I say it? The best people, I think, for the most part, like in terms of skill, whatever the heck that is, they're still rising up and you're still finding them where they belong, quite frankly, on the global leaderboard. As opposed to last season where, <laughs> because of the exploits, uh, some of those people were also smart enough to get on that exploit train and, and represent, but uh, there were a lot of people that were there just, just as casual players that happened to know how to do the exploit and they had the tech to get themselves there. All those people got washed out. We, the Sharks ate them up at the beginning of the season. I did it too. Everyone else did it <laughs> that, uh, that were like kind of skilled players. All right. So they're, they're gone. Um, so it does mean the people at the top um, are skilled players now. That's good. The problem is how we got there is is not very fair. It, it, the 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 weight is really shifted into their favor with the broad spectrum queue and the rank advantage. I'm sorry, the tech advantage you get by quickly moving up through the ranks early in the season. So they've got a really really big head start. And of course, I was warning you guys about the head start that, that will occur. And now we've seen it play out. Um, that's the other reason why they don't have to play so many matches because the deck is stacked. <laughs> They got tech. They got tech, guys. Let's go back to that other chart to emphasize that point. The tech that these people have, guys. Look. Um, so, turn that back on. Junk that stuff. Again, the, the trend line for tech over here, whoops, turning that back on, runs something like this. But then what happens up here? Oh my goodness. You've got <laughs> the vacuum. <laughs> The tech giants, guys, that's what you run into, okay? So it's not exactly fair. 
<laughs> when when someone's down here at 1800 tech and they're battling somebody at 2200 tech and it, and it's a gap that's like really hard to close um ooh, <laughs> it's 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 rough it, um so that that needs to be fixed that 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 line needs to be smooth we we don't need we don't need this population up here that's that's wrong it's got to go <laughs> so hopefully they can fix that we, we just need this nice smooth line that runs like this okay Th this is the line we're looking for something like that we don't need this giant spike on the end that spike says something's wrong um but it's okay it's still a beta season guys please be patient aren't, aren't you having a fun time with warships at least i am i know some of you guys are getting stuck uh tech tree decisions bad tech tree decisions can be very penalizing um maybe they can give us a way to like make one like adjustment every season that would be nice um we'll see i i doubt it i doubt it they got other things to worry about right now but it's it's a concern it's a concern because i know a lot of people that have actually turned away from the game because they just started out so badly in the second season and especially because of that elevator they, they ran into that elevator that was already sucking stars up and it was really hard to push through that line of players with the broad spectrum queue because you're getting so many bad matches they were just frustrated and they, they quit the season okay we don't want that um, so it is a real problem. Anyway, let's get back on the ship, guys. Let's do some gameplay, all right? Um, we've got Mini Bobber. There's his awesome base. And, uh, here's his awesome ship. Now let's talk about his ship a little bit, guys. Um, if you haven't noticed, there's a, there's a huge meta going around. All these metas. Metas everywhere. We got Grens. We got Grens out the wazoo. They are everywhere, raining down pain through all the ranks. As soon as Grens become available, as soon as people start maxing these harbingers of destruction and victory, where the heck are they? They're starting to use them to a great, great effectiveness. I know I'm just flipping right by them. Here they are at the bottom. Um, so yeah, that happens in the fourth engine room tier, right? One, two, three, and yeah, four, five, I can't count, whatever, guys. Um, they're awesome. They're too awesome, though. They're too strong. A lot of bases are vulnerable to it. A lot of bases set up early for defense against heavy Zooka, and that meant a lot of really strong, like, single point stuff, and, uh, or, and or splash, but the, the Grens, they just, they... Look, I don't even have boom cannons upgraded yet, and a boom cannon's great for Grens, right? Or I don't even have them unlocked yet. Um, so it just, it, it's just, it's a counter meta, okay? It's a counter meta that was a, basically a counter meta to the HZ meta, and it's it's really working well, because we haven't built our defenses for it. Um, that's why it's so strong. And um, that, that's the way metas work, guys. They shift. So as an example, most people have been picking doom cannons. I told you guys to pick doom cannons as well, but I did always say shock blasters could be viable. Um, well, because here's the deal, I believe shock blasters are more viable for, uh, to attack against Grens, but it just leaves you more vulnerable to HC. You know, there's no perfect defense, but I might, I might switch that sucker here soon. Uh, yeah, I got the dimes for it. Um, but the point is this, guys, I'm building my base to try to start to work out an anti-Gren defense. I'm sick of seeing these guys throwing their junk all over my ship. Stop doing it. <laughs> But I'll probably just get rushed or whatever. So to do this, though, guys, and uh, Mini Bobber, I've gone down the dark path of rocket launchers, okay? And I've got three because I've got rank 10. I'm sorry. I've got level 10 rocket launchers, which correspond to rank three rocket launchers. My next upgrade costs a ton, guys. It costs a ton, a ton, a ton. 1.2 million. What do you think I'm made of? Upgrade tokens? I don't think so. Um, but, uh, man, they're juicy, because the range on these suckers is so good, they're gonna be hammering down, but they're lower level, so they're a bit weak, you see? But, for that upgrade of 1.2 million tokens, guys, I'm gonna get, whoops, over here, and get rid of that, I'm going to get an extra 10 DPS, which is roughly 20%, right? Because if you assume that this number right here, this 47, it's close to 50, right? Which is half of 100. So if I'm getting 10 out of 50, that means I'm getting 20 out of 100, which means I'm getting a 20% increase in my damage. Well, you know what, guys? I know a much cheaper way to do that. Um, that, that that's a bad deal. Deal or no deal? No deal. Uh, at least not yet. Um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm working on this sucker over here, our building damage node. Um, I've already got 30% going into that, and I'm going to keep dumping some upgrade tokens in there. It's way cheaper, okay? Plus, it 
buffs all of my defensive damages. So the important thing about getting up to this point in the rocket launcher, which the last upgrade cost me 500,000, was that I was able to unlock a third one, okay? So that's nice. And then um, I took the crazy decision up here on this multi-node to actually take the, the one extra rocket launcher, but that's because I'm trying stuff out, all right? Um, Hot Pot and Flot Sam, they're both excellent choices. Um, and rocket launcher is the crazy choice, but we're gonna take the crazy route. And, and I'm just gonna keep cranking up that damage. And as you can see, guys, Mini Bobber stuck right here at five engine rooms. I will, I am not HQ20, so I will be just living in the five engine room meta land all through the season. So we're gonna make, we're gonna make our own little fun meta. Um, uh, well, or anti, I'm gonna, I'm gonna counter the counter meta, right? Which probably means I'll just get taken by HZ. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's the basic idea. Now, I've also got a crazy troop combo. Um, that I'm running. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, and, you know, really, I should show you guys a replay. I know nobody wants to see replays, but this one's good. This one's good, guys, I promise. Um, I think I gotta do it from here. Let's see. I wanna show you how effective this is, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the combo. You, you sort of saw it just a second ago, but, um, oh gosh, which video was it? I think it was this one. Nope. Um, this one. Oh, that's right, it's because I'm recording videos, duh. Uh, it's this one then. Yeah, okay, I forgot, it, it's, I was had the count in my head. So, can I pause it? Here we go. Alright, so this was a recent video, maybe a couple days ago, um, that I took, and it was so good I wanted to keep it. And I want to show you the versatility of this troop combination and the amount of damage that Grens can do. I also want to showcase Sparky and how good she is, because that's the hero I'm going to be using in this troop combo. The troop combo, it's nuts, guys. It's two heavies, two Zookas, two Grens, one Medic and one Cryo, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. That's a line from a song. But but no, it, that's that's the troop combo. I don't even have a name for it yet. There's just too much junk in there. Um, but it's got a lot of versatility, which is why I like it. And in this, you're going to see where most players would be dead and the push would be over. You're going to see how I take this guy to Pound Town. I was behind. I needed to get the final engine room that I do end up getting. I needed that thing for the win. Um, now here you can go. Here you can see I'm just up against a typical ship of a couple days ago. This guy also it's not really typical. He does have three rockets. He's going with the rocket approach himself. He probably is doing anti grand stuff um, just based on the way he's got all his defenses laid out. Um, but there you go. You can see you can see the troop combo coming in there doing work, just taking junk out. I've got to try to preserve the heavies as much as possible, but they're just they're just getting eaten up. And once the heavies go down, it shifts into a whole different mode, which is kind of like stay alive for as long as possible and destroy as many key structures as possible and get ready for the rest of your troops to die, with the exception of Sparky, the Grens, and maybe the Medics if you're lucky. This one might not have had Medics. I might, have been, I might not have been running Medics back then. Um, I don't think I did. Anyway, the point is, the Zookas are dead, the Cryos are dead, and I'm just going to be down to like... A couple of grands and Sparky. All right, watch what they can do, guys. It's not, it'll it'll fast forward. It'll fast forward. Um, but uh, yeah, you're not ne you're never out, right, guys? You're never out. The power of grands is absolutely amazing. I wish I could make it fast forward. Um, but we we are in times two mode right now. It just seems like time's going slower. Um, yeah, we're down to three stinking grands with almost no health and. Uh, we're just taking advantage of their range, guys. Grands are super powerful, and that's that's why they've created a, a new uh, meta in the game right now because of the way things are. Plus, with all the mines that are everywhere, Grens destroy mines way before they ever get to them, uh, as long as they're behind structures they've been throwing grenades over. So it also counters the, the meta of the mines quite well. So for those reasons and so many others, uh, the Grens are super, super strong. Um... I mean, good for them. I'm glad to see different troops in different different spotlights, you know. But as a result, guys, it means we got to fight against them, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill these stinking grins, you know. Uh, but I also like doing it. And there you go. You can see with that replay right there that I was able to actually get a whole lot of work done on that warship. Um, so let's just get into some lab attacks finally. Here we go. So we're gonna be using a similar troop combination to the one that you just saw on the replay, and I also wanna see how this defense works out, because I haven't really tested it much, and I just hit the wrong button, because I don't know what I'm doing. Truth be told, I, I, I'm just making all this stuff up, dude. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, here we go, here we go. 
So yeah, that's the troop combo, guys. Two heavies, two grands, a cryo, a medic, two zookas, and Sparky. Um, with the choice of uh, Critter Swarm or Universal Remote, it depends on the layout of the enemy base. If I see a lot of single point defenses together, I will run Critter Swarm. If I see some juicy targets or think I'm gonna have a hard time with it, I will choose Universal Remote because you can hack your rear end off to save the day. Um, I see with this, and also with the troop combo, sometimes you can find a good opening to just grind stuff down. Like, I could grind this shock launcher down, but it's gonna be shocking me, which is slow, which means this guy's gonna try to attack me quickly. He wants me to waste time. Um, so we're just gonna go straight in. Now, we see he's got 30% building health and 20% troop damage. I've got 0% uh, troop damage and 0% uh, building health, but I do have the 30% building damage. Um, and I'm just looking. He's got one Doom Cannon here and the other one back here. We typically Bart the far one out. I think we will. And then the goal is to try to kill this sucker and uh, at least have a couple troops alive to get some engine rooms after all that. So without further ado, guys, let's jump into it, shall we? All right, here we go. Um, starting off with 51 GBE. Let's go ahead and hide this junk. I don't need to see my toolbar. And let's get the heavies out. Turn the volume down, because I never have the volume set properly. Let's get Sparky, Zookas, I don't know, just everybody else. Just everybody come on out. Come on out, guys. It's time to party. Um, okay, now I don't want to lose heavies. So the cannons probably need some shocking. He's going to get one shot off. We also got boom cannon action down here, which which that's, that's not cool, guys. Um, I can put some distraction critters on the machine gun right behind this boom cannon. Oh, no, I hit Critter Swarm. That's right, I don't have Critters, guys. <laughs> Oops, there goes Critter Swarm. Um, and we're just gonna eat that Boom Cannon. Let's go ahead and put a shock on the Doom Cannon that I uh, totally forgot to bark the other one out too, guys. It's gonna be one and two Barrage and one Artillery. You know, I think I did this in the last video I shot for you guys too. I forgot to bark out the stinking Doom Cannon. Um, it's just a lot, it's a lot when I'm talking. Um, okay. Getting there. What are, what are our troops doing? Okay, we need them to kill the Doom Cannon. That needs to die. Let's get some Critter Swarm going. And I need to get another artillery off on the other Doom Cannon. I would really like you guys to turn up and attack it. We've got a Cryo on it, which is awesome. we got all of our Zookas looking at it. Fantastic. Most of our Zookas, at least. Just start killing stuff, guys. I need to get that other Doom Cannon out. Let's get our troops down south, away from the Doom Cannon. And we're gonna work our way back up. We've got two minutes and 15 seconds to do our work. Okay. First order is to make sure our troops are okay. We're just down to the to the Grens and the Medics right now with Sparky. That's fine. That's how this attack transitions always. Okay, and we'll take this out. I think that gets it. Boom, Doom Cannon gone. And I'll show you how to do some Gren work. Okay, the mortar's a bit of a problem, but we'll use the engine room to anchor our throws, and the overthrow will do some damage to the mortar. Obviously, guys, mortars outrange Gren, so you gotta be careful how you approach them. But with all good Grenning, guys, you know to use your anchors and to use your angles. That's part of the reason we flared to the bottom here. Um, so we just, we just gotta wait. And I need that sniper tower down as well, and then I can move in and make a, make a move. When you move in closer to your target, you guys know it increases the Gren's accuracy, so they can actually do more DPS to a single target in front of them by flaring in close. And this is the trick. Okay, here we go. Let's flare them in way, way down here. Get nice and tight. Finish off the rest of this one. Oh, they are going after the machine gun, which is fine. They are going to target the um, closest defense within their range that actually does damage. If there's no defenses that do damage to them, then they attack the nearest defensive building. So that's what you saw happen right there. It's not a bug. That's that's intended. Um, I like the angle they're throwing at because it's, it's pretty much nailing the mortar, but you know, we could adjust that angle. Let's go over here to the corner. It's going to be a slightly better angle because I also want to get some more on that machine gun. And we've got 40 seconds. So we need to do some work. But the overthrow is also getting work back on this engine room. I don't think we can move fast enough to get both engine rooms, but we'll definitely get this one in front. Might have to flare close for that. We've only got one shock. We got one artillery. 23 seconds. Let's see, and you see, he's he's got us at four engine rooms. So we absolutely have to get this one down. I'm just afraid to lose our grins if we flare too close too soon. Let's flare in now. 
let's flare the um, engine room. Boom! Just like that, right at the last second. We take the win. Yeah. Oh, two stars from the first one of the day. Let's see what happened to him. Very curious. All right. What were you, what were you bringing? Okay, taking out the Far Doom Cannon. Good. Now, put this one out right in front, but I, I'm doing this because I don't like Grens, guys. But this might be a, too much of a sacrifice to put my proto out like that, but we're, we're trying stuff. And he's bringing, oh my goodness, 6-2. Heavy Zuka with Kavan and presumably second wind. I don't know about 6-2, guys. That's a lot of stinking heavies. Maybe he's afraid of all the damage that I had. Now, we're raining down rockets. Go double time. Um, yeah, he takes that out, no problem. He's got a lot of heavies, but not a lot of Zukas. So, you know, you do need some Zukas to do damage. But I don't have building health, so it's not, not really the worst idea, but I just, I've never seen anyone run 6-2. I've run 7-1 before, just because I'm crazy, but I've never seen 6-2. He might be crazy as well. Um, he's moving along, but those mortars are really giving him problems. Yeah, welcome, welcome to my, my mortar land. I hope you like it. Actually, I hope you don't. I hope you die, and uh, you did, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, heavies are just, just running out. He's running out of steam. He's really not able to get his GBE. Uh, he's not used to the damage, probably, because I think a 30% damage boost is a bit high at this range. And yeah, we've got the constant pain of at least this one rocket down here uh, doing work, helping to finish off the girls. He is just in that range. And boom, he goes down with the uh, kill from the rocket launcher. Uh, quick point on rocket launcher locations, guys. I really, really prefer... Oh, now I need that stupid draw tool back. Uh, there it is. And uh, whoops, I'm going to have to edit that junk anyway. Um, where is it? Here it is. Okay. Um, I really prefer rockets on the flanks, guys, and that's that's an important concept. What I mean by rockets on the flanks is rockets along the sides, anywhere along here or along here, because what's happening is, now I know I got this one in front, but he might move, he might move. Um, what's happening is when their troops come in, like... I don't want rockets in the front, okay? Like, this one's kind of a bad example. Like, if, or a good one, depending on how I look at it. When, when, when his troops came in, he had his heavies up front, and then he had his Zookas behind, right? Any rocket that's in front, for the most part, is only going to be hitting his heavies. But we want to kill the squishy stuff, right? I mean, we don't mind wearing down his troops, but we're trying to kill, okay? Um, to do that, you really benefit from flank rockets or side rockets. And, uh... That's the reason we put them on the side, because if we have a rocket located like here and here, hypothetically, and here and here, as as his troops move into the base, as they, as they move into the ship, I should say, let's just say they take a middle line and they run in like this. Well, what happens is, um, you know, his heavies might be fanned out like this, and then his zookas are all kind of scattered around behind. It gives those rockets opportunity to reach the back, the back of his, of his uh, formation. And especially if, well, this one would be dead. But if it wasn't, <laughs> it would be blasting the Zookas. But this one can oftentimes hit some Zookas, especially if he's losing some uh, riflemen up or some heavies up front. And same thing with any rockets along this side. If this one is still alive over here, it's got easy access to the Zookas now. Um, so this is the reason why we like to have flank rockets. Just one little note. I definitely know they work better on the flanks, at least when you're trying to kill the squishy troops. Um, so quick note on that. Guys, that's a lot of content in the video. I hope I didn't stumble over it too badly. Um, let's jump into one more attack, though, huh? You know what? Go big or go home, right? Uh, let's do one more mini bobber attack. I, we gotta feature that a little bit more, shall we? Hide that. Go here. Attack. Let's roll. Okay. Uh, oh gosh, this guy has 50% building health, and he's got 20% troop health and 40% troop damage. Also, guys, I'm, I'm going to be requesting to Rick that they include the GBE. We really need to see that. <laughs> it's very important that we know how much GBE our opponents have, because it helps us guide our strategy into what they might be doing to us, which tells us what we need to do to them. Uh, and we also need to see this stuff in replays. I'll be letting them know that as well. Because it's when you go back and look at a replay, you don't know, and there's no way to find out what uh, boost your opponents had. Because um, when you inspect the buildings, you don't see the health. Anyway, let's focus on this. Um, we're going to use, use the same troop combo. I'm not going to get fancy. Uh, yeah, he's everyone's putting Doom Cannons up front. Um, but this guy's a little bit smarter because he protects it a little bit better than I protect mine. 
Nobody likes Grenz. <laughs> he's got boom cannons and he's got a couple rockets as well. Um, gosh, I can see why he doesn't like Grenz. I would actually love to just bring a bunch of Grenz onto this base. Um, but we ran out of time for that. So, goodness gracious, with 50% health, uh, that is tough, I'll be honest. It's gonna, I don't really have the Bart juice to Bart out both, um, what you call it, both Doom Cannons. So we're gonna have to YOLO this. Uh, what's the range on those Doom Cannons? Okay, the front one, if we sneak by the front one, and we just work in the back, we'll just get owned by this one. That one's gotta go. How do I do that? Do I spend all my GB to kill it? Eh, let's try. Okay. Two barrage, one, two, three artillery. I don't want to spend all of it because I might need some at the start. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> it's going to be fun. All right. This might end very poorly. I'll, I'll warn you right now. Let's get a critter swarm out. I really should probably uh, hold on for a shock. Are we? No, we're already almost in range of that other Doom Cannon, though. My goodness. So many decisions and not enough GBE to make them. Oh, yeah, we're going to get owned, guys. Um, I, I forgot. It takes me a while just to kill the buildings. And it's going to take two more artillery. Oh, gosh. Let's just shock this guy up front. I think all of our heavies. We've got three heavies left. Um, let's drop in one artillery right now. And another one. Okay, we got it. Uh, but our heavies are all dead, so we're in phase two. Um, for phase two, I really would like the shock launcher down. Marzukas are working on it. They're pretty safe for the moment. Now let's start working on our approach to the engine rooms. Let's get back to the bottom. Let's cover in smoke, because I do not want to lose Sparky. It's possible that we would lose her, so that's why we're covered in smoke. Oh gosh, we got mortar problems. Let's shock it. I put a med kit down. Ay! We lost a couple of grins on that one. Uh, we got a couple Zooka still alive. We're gonna help us get that mortar out, which is great. I think our medics can keep up with the uh, with the damage from the rockets on our grins. I don't really care if the Zookas die at this point, but hey, they're still working on the rocket launcher. That's great. We still got one little girl left. Here she is. Bless her heart. Mortar killed her. Um, yeah. But this will be kind of similar to the previous fight. We got one minute to operate in, though. We got less time. Um, but we're definitely getting this one engine room. Uh, we do have Sniper on our Medic, which is not good. We lost the Medic, which means it's a little bit harder to keep up with the incoming damage. But I think we'll be okay, guys. Because there's only one rocket hitting us right now, and he doesn't—he did not boost his defensive building damage. That Sniper Tower, though, I really don't like it. And we're going to kill it with a Barrage. I hope. Right. Okay, well we just really need to get this one. Yeah, we'll get it in time. We'll get it in time, guys. Because he hasn't he hasn't killed any of my stuff. Get the flare in hand. They're gonna go straight for that sniper tower. Just kill it. <clears throat> Just kill it. Just kill it now, please. Okay, and then we'd flare over here. We might be in range of that mortar. In fact, we're definitely in range of that mortar. I should I should rephrase that. Come on, medics. I don't think you can keep up with that. But we only got 10 seconds anyway. Just getting some more damage in. I'm bringing some more monster. And just like that, guys, kaboom, we win. And that was a tough one because he had a lot of building health. Um, but we got it. Take a quick look at what he did to us. What he tried to do. You tried to grin me, bro? Or maybe you didn't know how to fight me because you couldn't use your grins. You're sneaking around. You're getting sneaky on me, aren't you? You're going to rush me? That's what it looks like you're doing. Clearing a path to the back. Yep, that's what you're doing. I think you got the message, don't bring Grenz here. Neither neither one of my opponents did. But you know, you do have a minefield you're running into, bro. I thought about this. That's why, you, that's why I have mines back there. Okay. 
interesting approach. You'd left both Doom Cannons up. You spent a bunch of GBE to get over there, but oh, you just wanted to go for the engine room. Yeah, you tried to go for a little quick attack, but uh, you got owned. No, doesn't work. Nice try, sir. Nice try. Um, yeah, so that's a huge video. Look at that. We just made it back to rank 22. And maybe I'll keep going and, uh, you know, climb that tree some further off, off the video here. Um, but please let me know in the comments below um, how things are going for you on your warship. And, uh, you know, just whatever the hell, whatever the heck else you, what heck else you want to tell me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that'd be great. Hope you guys have a super fantastic, awesome rest of your day. And uh, remember, if you made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. You must like this content. And remember, be kind to others. Because if you're not, you're just being mean, and mean people suck. Have a great day.